I have to ask then, what uh, what timeline do you think? Like first working out there, nuclear fusion power plant. Mm -hmm. When do you think? Yeah. So um, what we've been able to do is build, rapidly build, every few years, bring a new fusion system online. Um, in 2023, we signed a deal with Microsoft to build a power plant for Microsoft, for one of their data centers. And this is a power plant um, that is plugged into the grid, generating electricity from fusion. And um, and with a very, very tough, ambitious timeline of 2028 for the first electrons from that power plant. And that power plant will be powering a data center. That power plant will be powering the grid that the data center is plugged into. And we can get into the details of of how how the power grid works and and such. But yes, mm -hmm. so Microsoft will be buying the power from that power plant. Props to Microsoft for like creating a hard deadline. I love it. They are. They are. And <laughs> uh, it is daily that we think about that deadline. Um, we had been working with them on and off through all of those machines, through Grande, Venti, Trenta. Um, so they had seen us build, hit milestones, show that we can do fusion, scale up by orders of magnitude, and then and then access these advanced fusion fuels. So they had seen all of those things um, and seen the manufacturing we've built. We're already right now building the manufacturing to support that power plant. We're doing that today. Um, we started two years ago on doing the work around siting, around the interconnects. How do you plug fusion in? What does it look like? How do you site it? What are the environmental consequences? Who's going to regulate it? All of those things. So we spent a lot of time already and we're we're on our way. And it's going to be hard, like no joke about it. This is this is tough. And it's something that we think I think about every day. I'm sure you've had a bunch of people probably still tell you that this is a pipe dream, like this is impossible. Are there days that you and the team think that this is indeed impossible. And then you wake up the next day and you're like, all right, we're going to do it anyway. I mean, that's that's the thought process. That's the mentality. We're going to do it anyway. Let's go do it. The world needs it. Um, there's no physics reason this can't be done. Now it's a question of how fast can you build it? And can you engineer it to be as efficient as it needs to be? And, and, and those are engineering and manufacturing are ridiculously hard challenges. So do not, do not short sell that. But that's the goal. And, and that's, that's what we, we get up every day thinking about. This is something I was actually just thinking about and talking with some of my team in the last few days. We we certainly have people that say like, no, this can never be done. Um, and uh, and we had that before. We had that at the very beginning of, I want to go merge these plasmas together. And folks said, nope, that can never happen. And then we went off and did it. And you can't compress an FRC because it's unstable. In fact, I actually still hear that. FRCs are unstable. And um, and I say, yes, I know. Now let me introduce you to S star over E and 20 years of studies on what we know about that and, and how we can combat that. And so we've been able to show through lots of skepticism that we can still build and iterate. And there are things I don't know. I'm like, let's just be totally honest. As we're going to go build these things, we're going to discover new hard problems. Um, if we're not doing our job, if we're not if we're not discovering new hard problems, we probably didn't push hard enough. We probably didn't push fast enough. Um, and and I think that's that's really critical um, that that we build the team um, and we do the hiring to make sure that like the, everybody is is doing that problem. Now that doesn't mean it's not a hard a hard challenge and to keep folks motivated. Helion now is over five hundred people, but when we built Trenta, we're fifty people. Okay. So now there's, you know, over 300 humans working at Helion that didn't see us build a system from a computer model, bring it online and do fusion with it. Um, but even already for Polaris, there are uh, lots of humans that started for our seventh generation system. When we were running Trenta, doing fusion, you know, they were able to see that, see the measurements, know we were doing fusion, but yet... This next machine was just a simulation. And so seeing that get built, seeing that, like it's just awe-inspiring for folks. Um, and I'll tell you the first time that it that it comes online and flashes pink and you see that fusion glow, uh, it's, it's awe-inspiring. It's awe-inspiring. <laughs> I love that. The, fu I, uh, the, the fusion glow, yeah. yeah. Everybody changes their desktop, their Windows desktop backgrounds to now the, the, the fusion background, the, the plasma glow. So how can you actually see it? A couple of things. So one, to get access to it, we have windows. We have small windows all the way around that we look into it with cameras, 
uh, spectroscopy, lasers, other kinds of scientific diagnostics that we use to measure. Um, and, and so, so you get, you, you see the light emission through that, but also it's very bright. Yeah. And so the actual vacuum vessels themselves that we use are ceramic. There are uh, some versions of, s of silicon and oxygen, typically quartz, but there's also some other centered materials. And it's so bright that they can shine through those materials. And so what you see is you see the light of, not fusion, when fusion's happening, thermonuclear fusion is so hot that the light is in the X-ray spectrum and, and the human eye can't see that. Um, but as you're, as you're, as you're that ice cold 1 million degree plasma, when you're just getting started, it's emitting photons in a range and light in a range that humans can see. And so you see that mm -hmm. bright purple fuchsia color. And this would be, if you're doing actual cameras, this would be like extremely high speed cameras, that kind of thing. We have high speed ones and low speed ones. The, uh, traditional SLR cameras, which the ones that represent the right color, all they catch is the light, the integrated light, the flash. Um, they don't know, they can't see the, the plasma forming, accelerating, compressing. They can't see any of those things. They just see all of it integrated into one bright flash. Um, but the high-speed cameras, they can see that. And so the high-speed cameras we can use to actually measure that. In fact, we put special filters on them to measure different wavelengths of light. So we can tell, is it the hydrogen? Is it the heliums? Is it the helium three? Who's emitting the light? When are they emitting? What, what particles are emitting the light and when? And so by using those advanced diagnostics, we can now take movies of that, um, though they're, it's, not, it's not as great as just seeing that flash. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful, right? That human beings are able to create something like that. It's, it's truly beautiful.